Hey, how's it going, everybody? Um, so Zoroi 3 patch dropped last week. Uh, I had some time to play, uh, get some gear, and uh, finally had some time to work on this Zoroi 3 video uh, for the Crit Lich. It is uh, long overdue, but uh, Zoroi 2 didn't bring any changes for me to warrant uh, to make another build guide because it was pretty much identical to Zoroi 1. Um, so some of you might uh, be watching this video because uh, you enjoy the Lich, and but you were playing the Poison Lich. Now with the 083 changes, they kind of killed off that build because of the changes to Wandering Spirits, which was a main component of that build. Um, however, as far as uh, the Crit Lich goes, um, there was no, there's actually no changes in terms of damage. Um, there is a couple new uniques, which I'll be going over in the video, uh, that actually enhance the damage of the Crit Lich. So um, yeah, this uh, this particular patch is pretty good for the crit lich. Overall, um, there was some changes to uh, the dodge prefix on the belt, uh, which I'll be going over uh, in detail in the, in the item section of this video. Um, as far as monos go, uh, there's a nice little catch mechanic for corruption now. So if you actually push corruption in the previous patch, uh, you can actually do the other timelines and get caught up pretty quickly with the other timelines and catch up corruptions that way. Um, so. And the other notable changes with arenas, um, now arenas no longer have the golden arena key. It was replaced by the arena key of memory. Um, so the big change with that is now the arena key of memory starts with you uh, starts with a minimum wave count of 100 instead of 80, and um, it also takes into account your previous wave push. And uh, so, for instance, if you push to wave 300. Um, and then you reattempt arenas, it will start you off at wave 150 on the next attempt. So it's just half your waves of your previous push. Um, the other change, uh, well, it's a pretty big change, obviously, is um, with Chapter 9 mobs. So Chapter 9 was introduced this particular patch, um, and some of the mobs, which, you know, they're really nice and, you know, nice and pretty cool looking, um, but their damage uh, scaling is. Um, a lot higher it feels like uh, compared to the previous chapter mobs so um, even with the 0A3B uh, I think additional tuning is still warranted and I think they're working on that so um, if you notice um, in the background I'm doing a wave 300 ish um, and the crystal elementals are my nemesis in this particular patch because uh, they, they yeah you'll see in the background just slightly overtuned Okay, um, so now uh, on to the guide. Okay, so for passives, um, I'm gonna go over this as how you would or how I would normally level. Um, so for the Acolyte base class, you wanna get eight out of eight for into necrotic resistance, and then move into the four points um, generic increased damage, and then the last eight points in vitality, um, and then once you pick your mastery. Generally, I don't go past 20 points in uh, an Acolyte tree because I don't feel it very um, beneficial. Um, so if you're leveling and then you get to end of time, you should probably have more than 20 points. Um, if you do and you just want to fill something in the meantime while you're leveling, then you just fill it in rest and the increased damage. And then take points out back, like respect the points out when you, can go, uh, when you get your Lich Mastery. Okay, uh, for Lich Mastery, you want to start out with the health and spell damage, you just health first. Um, this node right here, you're not going to start off with um, going with Death Seal Deadlock for low life transition until probably level 60 something. So you probably come back to this node later. Um, so you want to get this 8 out of 8 first. Um, and then 5 points in increase necrotic damage, 8 points in vitality. Everything else in this tree is kind of, or in, in in the bottom half of the, the Lich tree is kind of whatever, is not really useful for the crit version of this build. Um, so with the filler, the, you're going to need like a few extra points to actually get to this um, uh, the top half of the uh, Lich tree. So the filler, you're going to put, it, put the rest in death, dance with death for now. Um, and then go with penetration. Five points of penetration first. Um, and then 5 points in flat spell necrotic and then 
If you're playing hardcore, I, I highly recommend you get this node first, and let's serve death for damage mitigation on potion use for physical and necrotic damage taken. So you want to get 5 points here. Um, brings up to this tier, you want to get uh, the 5 points in um, for the cast speed, move speed, and damage leached as health on hit. And then you're going to get soul, soul Maul first, because this again is the Lich's main sustain node. Um, because this is generic leech, um, so this this is um, something that you get for poison. You can you know from all sources of damage that you do. Um, it's not just on hit leech. Um, so you're gonna rush to this node. After that, you're gonna go backwards and fill out the rest. Again, if you're gonna play hardcore, I recommend getting this node 10 out of 10 first um, because it's it's really good for um, well damage mitigation, especially physical. Right, a lot of things, a lot of uh, mobs in this game. Your physical and some sort of other damage type as a hybrid damage type um, so I'll probably recommend that if you're playing hardcore if you're playing softcore then just go fill in the damage uh, in the order you you like it doesn't really matter what order it is um, in the end um, I do recommend getting penetration first and after you fill the penetration by this point you should be about level 60 something and that's when you should have um, that's when you should be able to go Death Seal and Deadlock. Um, I'll fill out these points because it becomes more beneficial since uh, this uh, increased damage gets tripled when you turn on Death Seal. And then after that, you fill in the rest. It doesn't really matter what the order is, right? Um, I generally, like these two nodes right here, um, are the last nodes I get in, in, uh, in Acolyte. You want to get the crits per chance, you want to get the crit multi before you getting these two nodes. Um, okay, so that's it for the passives. Okay, for Rip Blood. Um, we're changing Rip Blood a little bit uh, in this patch because of the new weapon that we're using, the Mariana's Lost Soul, or Marina's Lost Soul. Um, the reason for that is because this... Um, with this wand, you're going to be able to get additional dam stacks on yourself and dam stack is going to increase our death wave damage by 10 percent per stack so you're going to want to be able to cast rip blood as fast as possible um so we took out points uh from the generic rip blood damage node or the more damage node and we're just um, subbing it in to more cast speed and you're going to need one point here because otherwise it's hard to sustain the mana. <clears throat> okay, so um, you want the double splatters as usual. Um, the cast speed and uh, minus mana cost and more cast speed. Um, two points and one point. So this you get some mana back. Um, you turn this to necrotic. Uh, you put three points here uh, for the global increased spell damage. Uh, I think that multiplier works out better for you because now we're stacking um uh well we're getting more cast speed so we're gonna hit a lot more and this comes out to be a little more ben beneficial um that one extra point uh you're gonna want this necrotic because well this is a necrotic based build and because also of the new relic we're using now uh this gives plus one to necrotic spells so pretty much every skill right here is going to be necrotic uh, except for Bone Curse. Oh, um, so this is the Rip Blood tree. Alright, for Transplant. Um, not much change for Transplant. Uh, for zero, from zero, 082 to 083 tree. Uh, we're still going with the uh, cast speed, the Rip Blood cast on Transplant. Additional detonations. Um, the detonations leave a pool. This is actually more important in this particular patch um, for us because now we actually don't have sources of chill or slow because our weapon is now a unique weapon and we can't craft that on the weapon anymore. Um, unless you actually want to farm chill and slow um, blessings, then you have to give up something else, right? So you have to make that decision. It's up to you if you want to, how you want to play it. Um, I have one point here for bone armor, just because why not, right? Um, 
the one point extra is because <laughs> because of this um, the heart, right? We get the plus one to necrotic spells. There are 21 points in here. Last patch I didn't have that, so we didn't have this node, but you know, why not, right? So um, everything else in this tree is pretty much the same. Um, kill threshold, if you have enough damage, if you feel like you have enough damage, this kill threshold, I don't feel is necessary for arenas. Again, I'm pointing out this is for arenas. The kill threshold is probably not necessary. Um, if you do monoliths, kill threshold is still good because of the modifiers that you give mobs and empowered. 20% um, kill threshold is actually still pretty good because, you know, sometimes you just get really bad modifiers and like you have, you know, mobs have high health mobs take less damage and uh, uh, crit avoidance, even though they nerfed it a little bit, is still 35% crit avoidance and, you know, high health and all that stuff. So like, you, crit, uh, the kill threshold is actually still pretty good for monoliths, right? Arenas, you don't have to worry about modifiers as much. Um, so it's up to you again if you want to it depends what you like to play more if you do monoliths more or you do arenas more um but generic like generally you just keep it here for the four because if you don't put four points here you just put more points in mon armor um so it's kind of up to you how you want to play it um that's it for transplant okay for reaper so there's with zero e3 there's a change to Transplant and Reap, um, where they share cooldowns unless you take this node here, then Holy Dominion. Um, so now, when you take that node, it increases your Reap cooldown by 200%. But even with this 3 out of 3 Reap cooldown recovery, it brings down Reap to 4.5. That's uh, including a 10% cooldown recovery uh, on the Helm. That's a tier 3. Even if you get a tier 5, this probably will be maybe 4.4 at best. Um, so, a little bit of quality of life nerf um, in 8.083, um, along with other nerfs, obviously. Um, but uh, this is one of the main ones where, you know, people were people who enjoy playing Lich um, had this double mobility, right? Like it, um, it made this class feel a lot more fluid when you're doing monos or just overall gameplay, right? But now since um, they felt this class being a little bit like, you know, the mobility is a little more than the other classes where we have two movement skills that doesn't share cooldown. Um, they wanted to bring it more in line with other classes. So I guess that uh, from that perspective, it's fair, right? Okay, so the tree itself, um, what we're doing is we're still going here for the necrotic damage and into the crit multi, 50% crit multi. Um, the main change is that this, these three points, uh, we got to get these three points here to get this. There are some ver variations. Some people don't take this node and uh, only take the reap um, and leave it as share cooldown. But I don't like that. And if you play, uh, if you play only monoliths, um, then you don't need to take this node. If you're actually playing to actually try to push ladders um, and arenas. Um, you would definitely want this node because there's a lot of situations where when you transplant, especially this playstyle or the place that I like to run it is you dive into mobs with transplant, right? That's when you're doing your burst damage. Um, and then you're going to be, you still have situations where you have to, when, when you are transplant in, you want to be able to reef back out. So if it shares cooldown, um, well, you can't reef back out instantly. Um, so now like you have to actually change uh, you're thinking or you're, you're placed out a little bit because you have to decide whether or not you actually need to reap out of a transplant because the moment you reap your reap is on the 4.5 so I can cool down now right so um, you can't do it like before where pretty much every time you transplant you have reap up at your disposal so now you have to actually make more decisions on uh, on your playstyle uh, and your situation so. That's the main difference. Everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, basically, I took out two points from here, and then I, I filled it here. Um, everything else in this tree is the same from zero e two. So nothing else really changed. Um, that's it for reap. Okay, um, bonkers, bonkers. Uh, zero changes from zero e two to zero e three. Uh, 
just to go over it real quick same thing um we still want the uh going two points here three points for the kill threshold this kill threshold doesn't really matter uh we want it because we want the explosion chance this is actually still pretty good damage against packs um you'll see a proccing fairly up frequently uh three points here in the duration and then um we want the 100 percent shred chance on bone curse which is really good again since it hits so often right we hit so often this procs very often and uh armor shred is still it still scales really well even though it's not physical um it still scales well because we hit so often um you want the mark of death and oppressive gaze again for the, for those that haven't seen um videos from zoe 2 you see you like when you see this you're like oh this is only a single target well it's a single target on your first cast of bone curse but then generally you just you're not going to just cast that and not do anything else right so when you cast that you have three seconds um to do other skills like transplant or even just hitting rip blood and splatters or um or whatever like because everything uh, everything all our damage is pretty ae right so the moment that you put you um you use bone curse and then you transplant all the mobs that you hit trans that you hit with transplant uh, is going to get affected by the bone curse because of cursed limbs. So uh, you want this because it's nice. It's a nice quality of life because it's unlimited duration, right? So you don't have to worry about applying um, uh, bone curse again after that. Um, and all of them is going to get hit with mark of death, or mark for death. So um, yep, that's it for bone curse. All right. Um, last but definitely not least, death seal. Um, so, in my opinion, Death Seal is a necessity for all Lich builds, at least in the final form of the Lich build. Um, the reason behind that is because of the damage uh, buffs that it gives you to, to your build and the damage reduction, damage mitigation it, it provides you to you. Uh, you can read the text and I'll explain to you why. Um, I'm not going to go over that in the video because I want to keep it moderately short, right? Um, as far as changes goes from 0 2 to 0 3 there's no changes for this particular build. There was a change from for Hungering Souls Frequency, which doesn't affect us, at least not this particular build. Um, if you're new and you haven't had a chance to watch um, a previous video uh, for the 0 one that I made, I actually went to a little more detail on Death Seal. And, um, uh, so, you, you know, if you have a chance, just take a look at that if you, uh, if you don't understand. Um, why I like this skill so much. Um, for leveling purposes, um, you don't have to go deadlock first um, if you're not comfortable. You can go the route of getting haste first just so you can run through things faster um, and then work towards your way to deadlock later. But typically, I, um, I get when I'm leveling, I get 5 out of 5 here, um, get the mortal pulse. And then I work towards um, two points in duration, one point. Um, this doesn't really do anything for you. So stability, and then I get the haste. Um, and then from there on, it's your call. You can either put points in Doom Call and it'll increase your damage on Death Waves for dam stack. Um, but I think typically you're going to want this. And then when you're ready and you feel like you're ready, you take that uh, deadlock. Um, and then hash out your, the final points in um, in the frequency and then the duration. Um, you're gonna have up to 25 points, actually up to 26 points if you actually get a um, a good a good roll on omnis. So you can get four points if you get uh, a tier seven helm and you're lucky, um, which I'm pretty sure most of you are luckier than I am. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to. <laughs> I'm playing this you know particular build i haven't seen a tier 7 death seal drop yet so um you get four points on the helm one point uh from the heart this is new in zero eight three um so this is a change from zero eight two zero eight three um and then one more point in omnis if you if you have a, a well rolled omnis right um the ones i have so far are just like it's the rules are like not usable so um is Omni the best in slot? Mm, if you get again, if you get a good roll one. Otherwise, you can do without it. Um, so 
Typically, you probably have 24 points. That's with the, the tier six helm and and uh, and the heart. And if you, for some reason, have a tier seven and you have four points on the helm, or you have really well rolled omnis, then I will put, probably put the last point in frequency. Um, and if you have 26 points for whatever reason, um, it's up to you what you want to put in. Um, maybe the area. So. Um, yeah, and that covers it. Whoops, that covers it for Destiel. Okay, so um, next is gearing. Um, there's, I'm gonna rant a little bit here, but uh, there's some changes to 082 uh, from 082 to 083 um, because they took out the shrouding affix, which is a dodge on potion use. Um, why they did that? You could read the patch notes and see if you. I mean, I guess there's enough people that don't like having to having a benefit of uh, getting dodge on potion use. They feel like that's a, a like a best in slot prefix for um, for the belt. So they don't want people to feel like they need to have to use a potion every four seconds to have dodge up. I mean, I don't know people anybody that actually does that. <laughs> Um, it was really good for our synergies because we benefit from um, dodge and potion use from the physical and necrotic, less damage taken from physical and necrotic. And in the previous version of this, on um, Azuray 2, I was running um, Grimoire, which you take uh, additional, or not additional, but less damage from void, necrotic, and poison damage as well. And you get a flat 37 or up to 40 uh, necrotic spell damage on potion use. So. It was really good um, synergies with that, right? And you use that when you're going to when you when you um, typically in the playstyle you potion first and then you dive in, right? Because you can um, have a, a four second window where you're like you know really tanky and you're doing a lot of damage, right? Um, yeah, typically like you potion, you just jump in like that, right? Against packs or against a big mob or you know something that'll hit you really hard, or you anticipate something that's going to hit you really hard, so you, you pre pot. Um, you get the buff and then you go in, right? Um, but in this particular patch, they decided to to remove that. Um, instead, they put they replaced that with cleanse. Now, cleanse is useless for our build because well, we need damn stacks for damage. So, if you're running, if you already have a belt that had shrouding, it became cleanse. Um, so that belt that you're wearing. Essentially, it's just useless now, um, because again, if you cleanse damned off, you're <laughs> you're just removing your damage, right? So, so uh, yeah, um, I, I wasn't very happy about that change, but um, it is what it is, right? So you gotta deal with it. So with that, um, um, dodge became a dead stat um, because it's almost impossible for you to get even remotely close to 50% dodge without sacrificing every single HP affix on your gear. So it is not worth, it is definitely not a good trade-off. So in that sense, there's zero, there's no reason for you to gear dodge anymore. Um, so if you had a somewhat, somewhat similar setup um, as me uh, in 082 where you can get roughly 50% dodge chance on potion use, well, now you just put everything as health. So health, 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 um, again, health and well, in, in my in my case, I had to um, get physical resistance because um, I, I had to reduce some of my gear to uh, to deal with the uh, you know the um, the resistance Tetris <laughs> that you have to go through with regearing. Right, uh, my gear is by no means optimal at all. Um, I have a gear planner for what I would like to have um, down below, but um, currently that's uh, that's the main change for for Zoe three. Um, but um, some positives, right? It's not all—it's not all bad. Um, this particular wand is a—it's uh, a profane wand, which is a high tier or high base, and it gives up to 25 flat, and it gives up to 160% increased spell damage and up to 20% cast speed, which is really nice for this particular build. Downside of that is you—you you lose 10% health. 
uh, which is okay, because now we're stacking health and we don't have any dodge, right? So, um, optimal, like, you, you probably, if you actually have good rolls uh, uh, on your gear for health, you probably have 3,000 or so health, um, and then 10%, so you're looking at roughly 2,700 health uh, on a final version of this build. Um, again, this wand uh, increases our death seal damage because you are now damning yourself per stack a per time uh, every time you cast so if you look at the bottom right here um we're trying to stack as much damn stack as possible to to get more damage out of our our death waves um so essentially it doubles your damage because before you're limited to 15 death uh damn stacks on yourself with this you can go up to well for my build or uh, for my gear i can go up to 30 if you have like really best inside min max gear, you could probably get like 33, maybe, maybe 34. Um, the other piece of gear that's changed uh, that we're replacing, we replaced the grimoire or the, uh, the twisted heart of Ukeros. I'm not sure how I'm pronounced that honestly. Um, but what this does is, if you look at the ward, so every time you um, you cast. You directly cast a necrotic spell, which is a rib blood or transplant. You get ward. You you convert your health to ward, right? But since we're leeching, our health just bounces right back up, and then we'll also have you know a good amount of ward as well. So during the death seal downtime, uh, now we actually have a buffer, additional ward buffer, which is not bad. Um, obviously, you know if you're familiar with death seal, <laughs> the moment you death seal, all this disappears, right? All the ward just disappears. Um, but I mean, who cares, right? It doesn't really matter. But uh, you know, this is a—it's not really a downside to this item at all. Um, plus one necrotic, spell necrotic, which is really good. Uh, strength. So strength also is a percentage um, for your armor, right? And uh, I have to wait for this to come back up. But when you're reperform and you death seal, because death seal also provides armor. Uh, depending on missing health, right? So with deadlock, you're gonna have 66% missing health, and your armor goes up to 45%. At least in my current gear, you can uh, you can actually do some changes to um, to see how you fit. Like some, you can go like instead maybe like a percent uh, a percent armor on your suffix to increase that that value a little bit during death seal so you get a little more even more uh, damage mitigation um, instead of going health uh, instead of going health percentage I guess but I mean again that's, that's your call so um, see what you like uh, but these two are the two items that are are new to this particular patch and uh, I feel like it's it's pretty strong uh, also and lastly uh, this this heart also provides uh, cast speed so it synergizes with the wand pretty well and it's really good for this particular version of this build um, as far as the other um, the other slots I changed out bone amulet because I want more cast speed uh, so with that you're gonna have to figure out again you have to do your uh, resistant Tetris and get your physical and necrotic resistance cap some way through idols um, or you know regearing a little bit uh, again I'm not gonna go in detail how to regear um, that's a you know that's that's for uh, there's other videos on how to gear the lizard does gearing videos and things like that um, but again ultimately you, you want to try to get your resistances in, in check I, I, I don't even have max I'm pretty like you know a few percentage off but it is what it is right um, the main idols i'm still keeping transplant cooldowns oh uh speaking of transplant the idols got nerfed so the percentage um on the big idols went from 18 percent uh maxed to 15 percent um and then the small idols went from i believe 12 percent to 10 percent so um you're gonna see a an, a nerf to the transplant cooldown um you can only get it down to maybe if you have perfect ones, I'm maybe 2.6, I think. Maybe 2.5 if you have like min maximum rolls on all transplant cooldowns, plus you have like a tier tier 5 cooldown helm or something. 
Um, the small ones I use here, um, it's different than what's on the planner because I need these to max out my, my necrotic resistances. So these slots here, right, uh, you're going to use for as you see fit, right? If you need physical resistance, you pop in physical. If you need some void resistance, you pop in void resistance. Um, so again, it's, it's a whole uh, resistance Tetris that you had to play, all right? Um, I think I've been going on a little too long about this uh, for, for items, but uh, yeah, the main changes again are the wand and the relic and the loss of the um, shrouding affix. So your dodge just became, yeah, you know, uh, just HP or armor. Up to you how you want to gear it. Okay. Um, there, one last note. Um, oh, sh I think I went on a little too long ranting on this. Uh, this particular um, unique idol is it's not that like I tested it out and I don't really like how it performs for uh, arenas just because you don't have rares all the time um, so you're not going to be able to keep up stacks of ambition um, but if you are able to if you're running monos like if you're doing corruption pushing and you run you know there's a fair good amount of rares so that you can keep up the ambition stacks and if you actually have a good a good amount of ambition stacks your armor can actually go up to like I don't know quite a bit right like I want to say maybe like 60% or so um, with enough stacks, obviously, right, so. Um, but again, I, I don't know if it's worth it for losing like 0.3 seconds on your transplant. So again, I mean, uh, you guys, you know, if you want to play and you want to test it out and see how you feel about it, that's up to you. But I don't feel like this is very, that great, just for, just for the sake of um, having a little bit more of armor for you know a few seconds so um yeah i think that wraps it up for our items all right so that's it for this video um i hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions feel free to leave in the comments comment section below um i don't make too many youtube videos um i typically just stream uh, between 9 p.m and 12 a.m pacific time on twitch so feel free to stop by and say hello and uh, if you have any additional questions, you can always feel free to ask me there. Um, I don't have... If you notice my channel, I just basically have Lich videos from the previous patches. Um, I do mainly only play Lich um, because of time constraints with uh, with work and, and uh, real life and everything. So, um, Anyways, uh, again, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you next time. Take care. Oh.